We've got hey, some I'm Louise, and I'm Louise, and you're listening to the Content is Profit podcast. We spent the last four years learning the strategies and techniques from some of the top marketers in the world on how to create content that turns into profit. If you'd like to learn more about how to turn your content into profit, go to contentisprofit.com. You can go now. There you go. All right, guys. Today, we have an amazing guest, that, and we're going to talk about how charisma hacking can help you stand in front of a camera. Oh, my gosh. I have so many questions for this, but I'm that so, is. so, so, so excited. But before we get started, please do not forget to subscribe. Smash that subscribe button because we've been loving all the comments and uh, all the feedback that we've been getting. So just make sure to follow us on social media at Biz Bros. Yeah, Co. and if you want to support us, please, please, please share this with anybody that you think might find some value on what we're going to talk about. Yes. So I remember the first time I saw our guest. Do, do you remember that oh, day? I do. I do. Okay, perfect. So I'm not alone in this. So <laughs> we were like on this online presentation and we kept seeing like this high energy like face, like just moving up and down the screen. And we're like, oh my gosh, like, like, she was also hyping the, the, the speaker like so much. And we're like, yep. we need to find out who this person is. That's right. We did some research, of course. <laughs> we connected and we have some mutual friends and we got in touch and we could not be any happier. Her mission is so amazing. She currently helps female entrepreneurs be heard, convert better on video and make people obsessed with them. I think this is a perfect mix between dangerous and exciting. I know, I know. That, that can be like super, <laughs> super dangerous on many levels. But anyway, so she has trained over 600 women in her secret sauce, Charisma Hacking, which we'll be learning a little bit more about. And uh, the art of being in front of other people. You know, she has been featuring mm. films, including High School Musical 2. What? Little side note there. As soon as I, my wife never sees these shows. And as soon as I told her that, she's like, oh my God, I'm in. Right? <laughs> so just because of that, like we're so excited. And uh, she's been performing in front of audiences as big as 35,000 people. That's just simply insane, you know? And we're here just freaking out in front of like two, three, four, five people, sometimes a hundred or so. I but, think uh, that's awesome. But yeah. without further ado, guys, <laughs> introducing the personality booster, complete boss, real life energizer, Bonnie, the charisma hacker boss herself, Miss Michael Jones! <laughs> Hey, hey, welcome. Hey. <laughs> All right. Wow. Yes. Well, that was incredible. <laughs> Michael, welcome Holy to the show. Phone. I am so impressed with you. I have a very quick story that um, <clears throat> that has to do with both of us right now because you just told this. On that call <laughs> that you're talking about that you initially saw me on, I didn't know anybody could see me. <laughs> <laughs> Until we were like halfway through the call. Oh my god! So, uh, another person that was on that call reached out to me, and they were like, "Oh my gosh!" When I saw you like hyping up this person, and like you were so pumped, like I knew we had to be friends. And I was like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that you could see me. I thought that Brooke could see me, who was doing the presentation. But like, I'm one of her coaches, and yeah. I was like, "Yeah, this is freaking awesome!" And of course, I was there for her. <laughs> but I didn't know people, people could see me. I literally, they are not kidding. I was like, <laughs> like the whole time. Yes, yeah, that, 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 that was like so happen. impressive. Such a great like first like impression. Yeah, I no, love it. That, that's amazing. Do you know when you like literally like when in your phones and notifications pop up or in the computer that your eye immediately goes there because of the movement? <laughs> that, that was us in the webinar. Like we could see someone moving in the corner and our eyes immediately went and you're like yeah let's go and, and I, I don't want to i don't want to leave like the 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 podcast audience out of this so please 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 if you're listening to this in like in apple podcast spotify stitcher any of this platform go out and check this video on facebook because you have to actually see like my call like oh my gosh amazing and yeah. uh, we definitely encourage you guys to like reach out and, and connect with her and you're gonna find out why so my call for obviously we're so freaking excited stoked to to have you here tell us a little bit like who who is McCall and uh you know a little bit of your backstory like where do you come from I mean all these things that you told me about Disney and performing and now helping female entrepreneurs wow where's that start Thank you. oh yeah so I started as a child performer so I started performing in front of audiences of 20,000 people when I was eight years old wow. so I have been in the entertainment industry uh my entire life 
So I started performing in front of audiences of 20,000 people when I was eight. Uh, when I was 11, that was when I hit, you know, the first crowd of 35,000 people. So like I've been in front of people for a really long time, started acting, songwriting, doing all of these things. But when I was a kid, I had incredible anxiety. I had incredible anxiety and I had to find a way, right? And performance anxiety above anything else. And I was performing so often that I had to find a way to curb that anxiety. Otherwise I was gonna die, right? I was gonna die, <laughs> it was just not gonna happen for me. So um, I had this incredible anxiety and I always felt like I was either doing something wrong or if there was just a way to make sure that I could do something right all the time, or if I could figure out how to make this uh, a repeatable process when I felt awesome yeah. so that I wouldn't go into something blind every single time I performed, um, I was like, okay, how could I do this? So I started being a total nerd and breaking down the systems and processes that went into awesome performance. And I started studying people who were better than me, right? Yeah. I started studying people who had a better crowd reaction when I was on the program with them or people who were networking when they were talking to people backstage or in the green rooms and like what they were saying and what they were doing and how they were able to connect with people and able to uh, frame their message or just crush this stage thing uh, repeatable, right? In a repeatable way every single time. So I also took from incredible, incredible teachers, incredible coaches, and they were all over the country. I had one in Texas, one in LA, one in Utah, and I would see them at least once a month. And every single one of them had their own method with things. And every time I would go from one to the next, I would take all of the systems and processes that one had, and I would show them to the next one, and they would tell me that I was doing it wrong because I wasn't doing it their way. So even yeah. So I was becoming um, a little bit more what I call conscious competent. That is a term that people use. It's knowing what you're doing right or knowing what you're doing wrong. I still, I felt like I was doing it wrong every time. And that just added to this anxiety. All of a sudden I felt like, you know, my performance anxiety is going down, but my learning anxiety is going up and I don't know how to do this. So I once again started breaking down the systems and processes and then it wasn't only how to be in front of people, but it was how to learn from people and how to teach people, meaning myself at this point, yeah. how to get exactly what somebody was looking for. And I started to do this. So uh, fast forward in my life, uh, after learning all these incredible things and being in this performance space, right, doing the same systems and processes breakdown for auditions or doing the same systems and processes breakdown for being on camera in a movie or doing a voiceover in all these different entertainment spaces. Faces. Um, I fast forward um, all of a sudden I had a period in my life where um, I had some toxic people <laughs> in my life that told me that I shouldn't be on camera anymore wow, because okay. I was too fat right and they were like listen oh you'll never God. be successful I know being the way that you look you will never be successful in this industry so Eesh. I took that to heart and I was like oh my gosh i hate this right <laughs> at the same time so i was incredibly afraid to be on camera i was like i will not get on camera again i will not do it i won't do it yeah right so at the same time i had somebody come to me and ask me if i would help them with an audition this was about okay. seven years ago they were like listen i have this acting audition coming up and i need help with it can you help me and at the time i didn't know if i was going to be any good at it and i believe that it's unethical to take people's money if you don't show them change and if you don't give them a measurable result i feel like that's Amazing. completely unethical yeah. and like i said i'm a person who has anxiety right if i feel unethical or like a sleaze ball my anxiety goes through the roof i'm like i cannot do this unless you do this my way we're going to film a before video at the beginning of your lesson and then we're going to film an after video at the end of your lesson and we're going to compare them yeah. and we're going to see if there was a measurable result and this became the system for my whole business i was like okay i get results for people and the systems and processes that i had broken down that had helped me so much I put them in such simple terms for myself that I was able to coach someone else the same way I had coached myself and I was able to give them my secret sauce very easily so then from there people realized right I was helping other people and they were like wait help me wait help me yeah and at this time because I didn't want to be on camera I focused all of my energy 
all of my creative energy because I had this expertise and this thing that I loved to do. I focused all of my energy into coaching other people how to do it so that I could still get that same high of succeeding in front of people. So I focused all of my energy on that and I started coaching singers and performers and actors and speakers and voiceover artists on how to do what I had done, how to break down the systems and processes to give people exactly what they want in order to be converted to them. Then the story's not even <laughs> over, folks. Then I go to funnel hacking live. So I went as a civilian, as I like to say. What, what, <laughs> year, what year was this that you went to funnel hacking live? This was in January. Oh, th like this now, like a, like a few months ago. Yeah. So we could have met. Went, we could have met there. That's our first time too. So awesome. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> so I went. This is a couple months ago, guys. Okay. I went to funnel hacking live to watch my sister-in-law speak. Catherine Jones is my sister-in-law. And I oh, went nice. to support her. I went as a civilian. I yeah. wasn't a funnel hacker. Right? I had all these systems and processes. I was coaching people in person, right? I was coaching people on how to do this stuff, but the world of internet marketing was this thing that Catherine loved that I didn't really know a lot about, right? So I went to support her. And as I sat there at Funnel Hacking Live, I saw entertainment everywhere. I yeah. saw people speaking on stage. I saw every single person with a camera or a phone filming what they were doing with either a vlog or an ad or a joint venture. I saw people recording podcasts. I saw entertainment everywhere. Yeah. And I saw people doing it not super well, right? Everywhere that I looked, I realized in that moment that these people could benefit and their entire lives would change if they had the frameworks that I knew. If they could show up better in front of people, their message would be heard. Their message would be able to change other people's lives. So I sat there and I was like, okay, I've worked with entertainers, I've worked with singers, I've worked with speakers, I've worked with actresses, I've worked with all these people. Yeah. But entrepreneurs, are much more active as entertainers than anybody I have ever worked with, ever worked with. And they would benefit the very most from what I have to teach. So I literally went home from Funnel Hacking Live. I binged all of Russell Brunson's book. I was like, <laughs> okay, I'm converted. Sure, he's cool. Yep, yeah. So like, maybe he'll make something of his life someday if he's lucky. You know, I'm like, he's a cool guy. So I binge his books and I create charisma hacking. I create charisma hacking. Amazing. I build out my entire new value ladder, right? So at this point, I already have a successful business. I don't need another one, right? I already have this, but yeah. charisma hacking, it wasn't something that I felt like, oh, it was fate. No, no, no. I went off. I caught that fish. <laughs> I caught that fish and I reeled it in. And I was like, this is what I want. This is what I need. You know what I mean? It's like, I freaking caught that fish. I saw it. I willed it and I freaking did it. I built out my whole value ladder to make money the whole time. I built oh, a Facebook group and I started connecting with people and teaching them the things that I had already perfected teaching. And guys, it is working. It is working <laughs> and it's yes. already changed lives. It's great. I freaking love charisma hacking. So I tell everybody, the world needs charisma hacking. Every single human would benefit from charisma hacking because it amplifies messages. Yeah. It tells people your story in a way that converts or in a way that will change their life. It's It does things for people where, yes, it teaches you how to be better on camera, right? It does do that. But the reason why it makes people obsessed with them is we make sure we dive into your stories in the right way. We apply the systems and processes that I built and I learned my entire life about how to connect with humans in a way that's repeatable and in yeah. a way that literally makes people obsessed with you. So that's charisma hacking. I'm sure that I, I'm hoping I answered your question. <laughs> that was amazing. I love it, yeah. Even the audience. Big round of applause from the audience. There we, yeah, there we go. Wow, that was uh, I. I felt like like a hurricane just like passed through the office, just like listening to to that story. But Dude, it's so cool. Like so I many, love it. so many good points. <laughs> no, I'm like writing down here all the points, and I think you nights. made you made so many points. Like throughout your story, something that I could that I could notice was that you learn entrepreneurship throughout your career growing up, right? Like maybe for you yeah. didn't look as entrepreneurship. 
but you like you mentioned so many times systems and processes right like that is something that we been learning three four years after we started our business right yeah so like the fact that you were so focused on system and processes when you were growing up you know to take care of that that anxiety it has helped you build the business that you have today and i mean as as that so many other things you know you also talk about coaching right like how you would take the processes to another one and since they weren't doing it you, their way it was wrong and i feel for that so much because I think a lot of people get confused hearing so many voices, so many other people, and they haven't found who they really are. Yeah. Right. So they are like, well, they, then I feel like they start they start doubting themselves even more. Like, wait, am I doing it wrong then? And then they move on to the next one. Oh, am I doing it wrong because it's not their way? And I think the journey, like you're saying, you know, is amplify your message. And the key word there is your. Your is, message. Is find yeah. your personality, who you are, who you want to talk to, Again, like so many good things that we could dive in here. Yeah. So, um, so I, I found so interesting, Michael, that like this only happened as the time that we're recording this, what, three, four months ago? Yeah. Uh, and you're like crushing it. So, wow. Talk about an action taker. Like. Oh my gosh, like insane. So we need to keep you very, very close to us because uh, we always say this joke. I don't know if it's a joke, but like we're, we're Hispanics, obviously. We're not from here. And, <laughs> and we tend to be very late and we tend to like take our time. And, you know, there's some people that we love that hate that, but that's okay. So that we need action takers like you, like next to us. But one of the points that wait, really... Wait, 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 sorry. Before we move on, yeah. I, I want to give a word of caution to the people that are listening because I don't want them to, to, to think that exactly. it's overnight success, right? Because yeah. If you guys listen to her whole story, like it, she's been working on this for a very long time. Yeah. And, you know, what she did is like she took advantage of the right opportunity because she was prepared for that moment. So yeah. that being said, guys, not overnight success. <laughs> she worked really hard really for it. Hard. So yeah. moving on. So, so yeah, 20 year overnight success. It's exactly. 20 year overnight success. <laughs> I know. So it, it's interesting because uh, I don't know if you know much of our background, but we we started working with a lot of brick and mortars, right? And obviously the show is called Content is Profit. We got to create content. And like you said, like uh, entrepreneurs are so much more active as entertainers, like than the real entertainers or the real and like, you know, quoting uh you know entertainers in the in the movie industry or whatever because we're in front of cameras every single day and uh, you know we hear people like russell branson steve larson they're like publish 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 but that means like honing down your message and and speaking to it like in front of a camera so i i found wonderful that you saw that opportunity and now you're helping so many people now how do you how do you do that right like how yeah Like, how do you make that connection between, you know, that old world where you were in and now you're trying to help these entrepreneurs? And what are some things that have you, that you've seen within that community that, uh, that you can help them with, right? Absolutely. That's a fantastic question. So uh, the, the connection um, that I feel like goes across all coaching and really anything that has to do with other people is the fear of rejection. The fear of rejection is huge. And as an entertainer, you are told over and over and over again that you need to have a thick skin because you will be rejected more often than you will be accepted, right? Yep. And with entrepreneurs, the fear of rejection keeps people from movement. It keeps people from moving their businesses forward in a way that's impactful because they're afraid that if they show one, if if they tell their story, that people will reject them. Two, if they get over the fear of telling their story, they're afraid that if they tell certain parts of their story, that they will be rejected. And three, if they feel like people see them trying, that people will feel like they're less successful. Yeah. People don't want to move until they're already successful, right? They feel like, okay, well now I'm going to post this post once I've made a million dollars. I'm going to reach out to people once I already have this cooking so that they look at me and think that I am successful because I have a monetary value attached to that. So people create these stories in their lives that just aren't true, right? The thing that I had to help all of the entertainers with, right? Singers, actresses, uh, speakers, all these people, their art, right? The reason why people have to go on press tours before movies come out, the reason why people do interviews, all that stuff is yeah. people yeah. have to convert audience to themselves 
in order to sell a product, right? When you get into high level business, you're working with people. You're not just working with products, but you're working with people, right? And as an entrepreneur, you are your business. You are your business. You're the face of your business. You are the spirit of your business. You are every single part of your business. So as an entertainer, the things that I saw that crossed over is if you don't go in and make a good impression and then use the systems and processes it takes to impress people or tell your story in the right way, you don't get the job, right? For an entrepreneur, the reason why this was so amplified and the reason why I literally went out and cut that fish of (laughs) these entrepreneurs, right, is because for entrepreneurs, if they don't convert their message, if they don't tell their message and their stories in the right way, if they don't build what Russell Brunson calls the attractive character, what I call the believable character, if they don't build it in the right way, they're not going to work with the right people. They're not going to work with the right people and their business will ultimately fail. It will ultimately fail. So the things that I have found, the way that I do this, as you asked, is I help people find what their message is. I help people frame that message in a way that their audience relates to. And I help people see that it's okay. We talk about the fear of rejection a lot, right? And getting over that fear of rejection is actually not moving past the actual fear of rejection. It's completely reframing it. If you can reframe it, I had to do this myself. Remember, there was a five-year period of time when I did not get on camera. I did not get on camera because of the fear of rejection, right? But when I framed my brain and I said, my message matters. My message is about them and not about me. My message is about how I can change somebody else's life rather than how I can fill my pockets or rather than how I can become famous or whatever yeah, these yeah. things were. When my message became about somebody else, I realized my message matters and my worth doesn't go down if I feel ugly, if I feel fat, if I feel unworthy of attention, my message doesn't become less powerful. And the moment that I realized that I stopped thinking about people thinking that I was perfect because that was very real for me. And I started wanting people to accept me or think that I was authentic, whether they liked that authentic me or not. Right. When I could tell my story and be very open with the things that I was doing, I no longer wanted somebody to look and see that I wasn't sweating and that I was doing this very easily. In fact, it was the opposite. I wanted people to look at me and say, she's trying so hard. Right. (laughs) I do. I try hard every day. You know, I wanted people to look at me and say like, oh, okay, she's been through hard things and those experiences have helped her help other people. I want people to look at me. I literally had this message. (laughs) Uh, It was a comment (laughs) on one of my videos. Somebody that I did not know posted and said, is this you on medication or off medication? <laughs> and I was like, thank you. Uh, yeah, it's like, <laughs> that's just me. <laughs> right? It's Exciting. like when I stopped trying to uh, cater the version of myself yeah. that I was for individual people, I stopped feeling the pressure of needing to change, yeah. right? All of a sudden I was like, well, this is me. And if you don't like that, right? I shifted the fear of rejection. I said, if you don't like this me, that actually I don't want you in my life or in my business and that's okay. You can like something else, you can like whatever. Yeah, but yeah. when I was so worried about people liking me and liking that I was perfect, every time I got a hater or somebody said something negative about me, I would change. I would change what I was showing i would change the stories i was telling but now because i am so much myself and what i help my charisma hackers do is like because we're focusing on the authentic relatable parts of your story we're making you not not really rejection proof but we're changing you to be no longer rejection dependent right Mm -hmm. We're, we're not saying like if you are rejected then you are worthless we say if you are rejected we got to change your audience a little bit if you are rejected we need to change you know the people that you're reaching out to we need to change the people that you're adding on facebook we need to change your ad spend we need to change your target audience right if you're being rejected it's not something that's broken with you it's something that is broken in how we are creating your audience for you right because everybody it's like tupperware it's like there's a bottom for a top it's like a box (laughs) yeah that's right yeah 
right? Everybody does. Yep. It's just a matter of becoming your most authentic self, telling your stories in ways that will change people's lives so that you find the right people. Because if you're being rejected, guys, you're not you're not talking to the right people. Yeah. Or you're framing your message in a way that is inconsistent and that isn't reaching people emotionally. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Wow. Well, that's that was so good. I, again, so many points <laughs> that I love in every single answer that you're, you're giving. You're filling up like he, he writes, for those listening, he like writes as our speakers come in and yeah, write I, his points. And I, I have I, some sort of uh, short-term memory. So I write like, okay, she talked about this. Like I, I got to touch on that point so, so, so I don't forget. And and the notebook is like almost done, like almost over. Like, yeah, so yeah. many notes in just like, what, 25 minutes so far? <laughs> amazing, amazing. Okay. So like there's, you know, in, the, in this part of your answer, I noticed – one thing you know you didn't say this word but is perspective right fear of rejection and you are helping people change the perspective around it right and it is funny because i'm actually reading a book right now i think i actually Catherine jones is the one that recommended it it's called the art the war of art right and it actually talks about resistance and that resistance is is, is that rejection that you get when you go on pursuit of the thing that you love, that you want to do, right? And it, when you get your message, you're going to get a lot, a lot of resistance, but fear is never going to go away, right? And I think that's a perception, that, a perception that we grow up with saying like, oh, brave people or people that have accomplished things, they have no fear. And it's not that. What it is, is that people pretty much train themselves to move past fear every single time they get it. Right. Yeah. And they have that different perspective that is not about me. Right. It's about who am I helping the impact that I am creating. So first, I think that is huge. Yeah. You also talk about kind of like finding the right people, the filters. Right. And, you know, we as direct response marketers, <laughs> you know, we know that you got to fish from the right pond. But what I love is that you added an extra filter right there to qualify the people that work with you. It's not yeah. only the message, but it's your personality, right? Because, right. for example, that message that, that someone left you, you were like, thank you, because I don't want to work with you, you know? Like, <laughs> exactly. you can go, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take on the people that resonate with me, that yeah. are having fun with me, you know, and that want to learn from me. So I think that's super valuable for people listening, because, again, we always say quality of the message over quality of the production every single every time. Every single time. And for those listening, guys, like now you can add an extra layer of filter, which is your own personality. And, you know, like when I think in my head about the scenarios, we all do, right? Like, oh, I wish I should have done that. Or, oh, I could say this. I always think, and I, I said this to Cassie the other day in her podcast, I'm like, I, I think as a movie, right? Like <laughs> my actions, like me going through, <laughs> you know, the forest with a machete and stuff. I'm like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> And literally, when I see you, I'm like, she yeah. is like that person in real life. Like, I can tell what goes through your mind. I'm like, those are the stories that you are yeah. creating. But at the same time, that's your personality and you put it out there. And it's awesome. So, again, people that are listening, don't be afraid to be yourself because it's going to be an extra layer of filters that you're going to put to get even more qualified customers. Yeah. I remember like going off of uh, what you were saying. I remember a time where we were like consulting and helping like these different fitness studios to help with their content and like kind of hone down on their message, right? Kind of similar to, to what you do. And these guys perform every single day in front of full classes of 30 people, 40 people live on a mic, right? And we're like, this is going to be so easy. Like, they're going to be so amazing in front of a camera. And the second we put that camera in front of them, because the audience, they don't probably, they don't see it. They don't really know who's listening. They don't really know who's going to see them for the first time, right? They will, like, just, like, freeze. And we're like, oh, my God, this is a friction <laughs> point. I mean, like, and then we have to walk them through some stories. And, we're like, and then walking them through why being polarizing might be good for them. Because, like, well, what if somebody says that they don't, they don't agree with the way that we exercise? Well, that's perfect you don't want to try to convince to sell that person because they're the ones that are going to try to cancel the next day because it's not what they expected right so a lot of people especially like in the business environment is like i feel like that's a very real fear that you are tackling head on and you're like guys doesn't matter change your perspective is a matter of like i'm i'm looking at this as an opportunity as yeah. an indicator 
that maybe that's not my right audience or I need to like hone down my message a little bit more to make sure that we are in complete sync. So I freaking love yeah, it. I, I want to add something here, right? Like you said, you talk about people, they start meeting some resistance, right? From others when they try to start being different. And I'm going to kind of like circle about back to our intro here, right? You said you were in High School Musical and <laughs> there's that famous song, you know, leaving the status quo. So like... Oh, he's a fan. Uh, like, he is a fan, oh, just so you know. I, I love it, right? So, you know, what would be a recommendation for people that they are afraid of that because they're going to admit resistance and they're going to have people that are very close to them tell them, Hey, like, what are you doing? Question what they're doing, right? Like, and, and it's 100% normal. I, I think that everybody that tries to leave that, you know, I, I think is more commonly known as comfort zone. Other people are going to challenge those new beliefs that you're getting. So, like, what would be your recommendation to those people? You know, like, what would you say about leaving that status quo? Absolutely. The status quo. I love it. Yeah. Um, I would say the yes. first thing, the first thing that people need to do, um, I say this a lot to people, you have to, you have to do a lot of self-evaluation at first about your products and about your businesses. I believe, I know that I am newer to the internet marketing space and guys, the amount of people who are scamming people who don't actually get people results it's alarming yeah it's alarming right and for people who actually aren't changing people's lives like i guys don't do that <laughs> don't do that right the first thing that they need to do is they need to map out are you changing the world and people's lives or are you not yeah with your product and with your services are you helping people or are you not and if you are then you are serving no one by staying silent You yeah. are serving absolutely no one, yourself and your customers, by not putting yourself out there and by marketing your material. If you are not able to change people's lives, you are fired, go find a different business, right? If you are not able to actually provide change for people, you are fired. If you're not passionate about your own business, you created it, you're fired, go find something else, exactly. right? If you are, If you love your business, you know it helps people, you know it changes lives, you have to say why. Once you break down, does it help people, does it change people's lives? How does it do that? Why is it important? That is your message. That is your message and that's what you need to amplify. From that point on, the reason why you're able to be so much yourself from that point forward is your message matters and you just framed out why. Your message matters and you being the specific person who is telling this message matters because of the ways you think you're going to change people's lives. Nobody else can do it the way that you do it. Nobody else can. People work with people, not just with products. Yeah. We're in the people business, right? So the very first step you need to take is you have to evaluate, is this business worth something? And truly be honest with yourselves because if it's not, you have a lot of time in front of you where you can find something else. You know what I mean? Yeah, you yeah. didn't start working for yourself so that you could be imprisoned in something that you don't feel like works or changes the world. Yeah. You don't have to do that. There's a lot of nine to five jobs. There's oh. corporations who will hire you in a second. Yep. Right now, you work for yourself. You have created this journey. So if your message matters, if you think you can truly change people's lives and you know you have something to bring to the table, who are you serving by staying silent? Who are you serving by not moving outside of your comfort zone and pushing forward? Because then when you meet resistance, the thing you go back to is your list. If it's about your customer and not about you, if you truly can create change for people, yeah. it is your duty to serve them and to move forward. So when you meet that resistance, the thing that you tell yourself and other people is, I know you don't like that part of my business or that part about me, but here's why it's important. Here's why it's important because here's how it's going to change people's lives. And then if they still don't like it, guess what? You take the scissors and you snip them out of your life and you say, <laughs> thank you for asking me if I'm on medication. I don't want to work with you anyway. You know yeah. what I mean? If you have yeah. people who see what you're going to do, who see your vision, see your message, and see your person who's going to make it possible, and they don't like it, chances are they are mean, and they are not going to like it regardless if it was perfect or not. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They are yeah. not the people for you. So 
When you meet resistance, if it's good resistance and people are asking questions of how are you changing people's lives and why does it matter, guys, self-evaluate and be like, oh, that is resistance that is good resistance, right? It's resistance that you push through that puts you outside of your comfort zone because it challenges you to actually self-evaluate. If it's bad resistance and you say, oh my gosh, if they're like, well, that's a stupid idea, they either don't know your idea fully and you need to explain it further or they're an internet troll who's going to hate <laughs> your business because they're having a bad day and they are mean, you know yeah. what I mean? Which you don't want them anyway. It's like you said, the people who, who have the polarizing messages, if you believe in something, you can't be wavered away from it. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you're like, listen, if you think your workout system works, if you think your relationship coaching works and somebody comes in with something that's the opposite and they say, well, I heard this. <laughs> it's like, if that's true and if their system works, you either need to change your business entirely, yeah. which wouldn't be the case, or you say, okay, that's not a person that should work with me because then the results that I get, right? It's like, that's not your audience. Shift your ad spend, shift your target audience to somebody who looks at that and says, oh my gosh, that can help me. That can totally help me, yeah. right? Because there are a lot of other people who will serve the people, right? It's like the Tupperware thing. It's like the box. There is an audience built for you. You have to find them. You find them by framing your message in the right way and framing your personality right in the right way so that people know they want to work with you. The other thing that I know, I'm going to let you keep talking. I'm sorry. I know. No, I'm dude, go ahead. This keep is going. all about you. We're here taking notes. Yeah. Uh, but we're recording this, by the way. So, you know, we're, we're, we're students. Today, we're students. So don't worry about it. Go ahead. The other thing that people have to realize, too, is like when you um, when you meet a coach, when you meet a coach who's done it too, it's like, okay, I can help them, right? Yeah. I can help them. I can receive help from them, right? In all of the instances where it's like, okay, if you don't have the right audience, your message isn't going to resonate anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you don't have the right audience, your message isn't going to re resonate anyway. It's, it's all of these things that moving forward with your business, you need to find people who believe in what you're doing, yeah. right? You need to find people who who also believe in your message. I love it. To, to like go off of that, I remember like same thing at Funnel Hacking Live, like this was probably the first event that we went with a, a crowd that way, you know, so so involved like in inner marketing and the things that we were learning, right? Before it was like a lot of brick and mortars and, you know, just meeting people that maybe were not super familiar with the, with the concept, right? So outsiders, so we're like, oh my gosh, is, is our message wrong? Like I, I remember questioning, just like you were saying, like, is this the right audience? Is this the right thing that we should even be selling, right? Because we pivoted a, a lot, a lot. And it wasn't until that event, and I remember a, a very specific conversation. Yeah. We saw this guy, Nate. He had, like, a business next to, like, Steve Larson's event. Mm -hmm. And he's a photographer, and he was there taking amazing, awesome pictures. Yeah. And uh, as soon as we tell him, hey, this is what we do, and I think that was, like, the first time that we actually did the pitch of the thing that we do now, uh, the guy's like, oh, my God, that is so awesome. Like, how do I work with you guys? Immediately. And we're like, oh, my gosh. Like, where have you been all our lives? You know, <laughs> like where? And then we're like, okay, let's test this out. And throughout the conference, all the four days, five days that it was, we immediately like, this is what we do. This is what we do. And everybody there was like, oh my God, that's amazing. I need to chat with you guys. Oh my God, guys, that's amazing. I need to like have a conversation yeah, with you guys. I think the fact of yeah. just being a funnel hacking live for anybody, I mean, you've mentioned it right now. You have talked about having the right audience throughout this entire conversation, right? Yeah. And I think the fact of just going to Funnel Hacking Live and standing in that room with all 5,000 people, you can tell, like, these guys have the right audience. And you can say, this is the power of having a right audience. Like, i never been to any other event where people were so excited and they were all... Were yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And, and they were all 5,000 people in all the sessions, listening, paying attention, and that's when you know wow, like this is a good message and it resonated yeah. with everybody. And that's, that's I, I want to to the audience that maybe some some people listening to the show might not be familiar with uh, Funnel Hacking Live yeah. or ClickFunnels or all this this entire world. I want to bring it to their world. So, uh, Michael, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you like uh, soccer or real football, as we like to say? <laughs> real football, yeah. <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay, so yep. we live, we, we're from Jacksonville, Florida, and we, we have the Jaguars, which, you know, uh, unfortunately, they, they're not too good. But anyways, so 
I remember uh, I feel very foreign going to a Jags to the Jags stadium because we grew up with soccer. We play soccer. We speak the soccer language. Mm -hmm. So once I'm there, I'm having a conversation with a guy that's sitting next to me, and this guy's all decked out, the Jags hat, you know, the jacket, the beer, whatnot, all these things, right? And I'm like, dude, tonight the Barca, which is my favorite soccer team, is gonna be playing, and you know this place, and he's just gonna be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like. What's wrong with me? Like, you know, it's, it's that kind of feeling, right? I'm not talking to the right audience. I need to be talking about football, the Jags, uh, Minshu, to that specific fan, right? And then I go to my soccer friends and talk to my soccer. So that kind of, I, I, I hope that story can illustrate a little bit on how we felt in Funnel Hacking Live or dance and how people or business owners or like content creators can feel talking to the wrong audience. Yeah, so I think at this point, people that, that are listening, they might have the question, okay, like I know I need to go get the right audience. Now, how do I go about doing that, right? So I want to ask you like, what have you done to get in front of the right audience, right? And, and has content play a role in, the, in in that part of your business? Yes, 100%. It is all content. It is all content, <laughs> right? When I talk about like your message matters, like truly talk about a business pivot. I'm like, guys, four <laughs> months ago, five months ago, I changed everything. I changed everything because <laughs> I was like, catching that big fish, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, yeah. I changed everything. I totally relate to that. And my entire business demographic, I couldn't take even one person from before because they weren't entrepreneurs, right? Even one person from, from before, I had to start from ground zero as far as yeah. audience. My frameworks were the same, right? My framework and all of the business stuff that I had, the business tactics, they were the same. But I had to start from square one, right, with my audience. Yeah. So the first thing I had to do is I had to build, <laughs> I had to build my message and I had to do exactly that. What you, what we talked about before of like, okay, why does this matter? I was like, okay, female entrepreneurs, right? I feel like I can help female entrepreneurs. Uh, that's who I want my people to be. And moving forward, what do I wanna help them do? I wanna help them be heard. I want to help them be heard and I want to help them be more confident on camera, tell stories that convert, right? Create ads that are pattern interrupt, which means people stop scrolling. I want to help them be better in front of people. That's my message. From there, I literally, the first step that I took, right? After I built out, like, what do I want to do? Who do I want to help? The first thing that I did is I started to build a Facebook group. Within two weeks, I had 500 people. In it. Amazing. Wow. Right? which was crazy, right? But I started to build a Facebook group. And the first thing that I did was I invited the people that I knew, right? I invited Catherine into it. And I invited a couple of people that I had connected with at Funnel Hacking Live into that group, into that group. Yeah. From there, what I started to do is I started to just add value. I just started to help yeah. people. I started to tell them what I know because even though there are some people who are like, oh yeah, we're gonna help you build authenticity, right? It's a real buzzword in the internet marketing <laughs> space right now. Yeah. Most people don't know exactly how to do that, right? They don't break down the science behind it. And they're just like, well, we just want you to be confident. Yeah, go you, right? Which like, yeah, I do that too. I'm like, yeah, go you. But we talk about things like speed, right? It's like yeah. you said, like, the pattern interrupt that came or the way that you looking up when I was in Brooks webinar is yeah. a science, right? When people are scrolling, it's a speed thing. If you move slowly, they're never going to stop. If you move yeah. fast, they stop. Right. And yep. it's like, just talking about something as easy as speed. It's like all of my systems and processes are targeted actually towards people who are not good on camera, right? People who are good on camera benefit from it infinitely, but people who are not good on camera, do as well because yeah. it's very, very specific. So I got in this Facebook group, I started adding value and then I literally told these people that I had a message and I wanted to change the world and if they believed in what I was doing, that they should share it too. And Amazing. they did, right? It was like, listen, I'm adding value, I'm adding all of these trainings in here and I'm showing people how I do this. I'm showing people that this is something that they need. Immediately within like two weeks of starting the Charisma Hacking Group, I had a message from somebody. They came in and said, I have $50,000 worth of offers out right now because of what I learned from your free trainings in your Charisma Hacking Group. And I was like. Yeah. $50,000 worth of proposals out in a week 
because of what she learned with charisma hacking. Amazing. And it was like, wow. okay, do I think she's going to share that with her friends? Yes. Right. I started <laughs> to add value to these people's lives. Yeah. Then I literally had them engage with my systems and processes. I gave them challenges. I gave them things that would help them move forward in the world of charisma hacking. Right. As far as like my value ladder that I built out, the first thing they have to know is that it works. Because if they don't know that it works, then they're not going to want to buy into yeah. how much it works. Yep. Right. So I have to show them that it works. And I did that very quickly. I gave them a lot of training. I gave them a lot of information to the point where they were like, you have to slow down. And I was like, <laughs> ah, okay. Right. Here, here so we then go. I slow it down and yeah. I offer different coaching programs. Right. Yeah. Before I ever pitched a coaching program, the only thing that I had done is trained in my free Facebook group. I posted a training one day and within three hours, I had three people reach out to me and say, please be my coach. Please let me join your one on one coaching program that I had not pitched. <laughs> you like, must have one. Let's let me join. <laughs> I, mean, I was like, okay, fine. You can join. Yeah. Talk, well, talk, talk yeah. about the frictionless cell. Like, I, I think this is wonderful because uh, in the in the show we talked about that frictionless sell and uh, you know we come from an environment it's like high sales like speed like old school convincing style stuff and for the longest time we thought that was uh, the only way to to make a sell and what you're just explaining now which I'm actually gonna take as an action point so guys that you were expecting action points go back and re-listen the entire episode because it's, it's obviously full of full of uh, gold so I freaking loved it and again frictionless sell what an amazing yep. like value add action point that you just like just spit out amazing <laughs> amazing <laughs> yeah no that i, I love like, it i'm so sorry it's like if you're when we go back to like does it work does your business change lives if it does how are you doing that if it does you're not serving anybody by staying silent it's like yeah. if it works you can give people people are so afraid of giving people results without having them pay them first right yeah if it works it's gonna work forever and their value is going to increase the closer proximity they get to you right with group coaching with one-on-one -on -one coaching with whatever yeah you can help people at any level right interviews trainings whatever don't be afraid of showing people that it works because once they know it works they're not gonna leave they're not gonna leave and be like okay well that works but i'm out you know what i mean <laughs> they're not gonna leave yeah. if anything they're gonna get closer to you Right. The thing Amazing. that worked for my business so well is I showed people that it works before anything else. I was like, okay, here are yeah. the things that you're going to need in your business. And then I increased the value the closer that they get to me. Right. But I, right. I'm already, I'm already giving them a result just by being in my Facebook group. They're already getting results. Exactly. Then in my coaching programs, they get more of a result. Right. But they yeah. don't walk away just feeling like I'm trying to sell them on something. Yeah. Right. They walk away with a result, yeah. which is so important. Amazing. I, l I love it. Everything you've said, I think you're gonna have to come for a part two as well. We, I, I keep looking at the clock. I'm like, what? Yeah, we, 47 we, minutes we, already. We want what? to be super, super <laughs> respectful of your time. Yeah. And I want to invite everybody that is listening, guys. Like, her energy is so freaking contagious. Like her passion, everything that, so she, that she has to say. And yes, we've all heard. I don't know the exact saying, but it's something that you pretty much are or grow to the extent that you people that from. Uh, like the people you surround yourself with. So guys, go surround yourself with Macaul because <laughs> she is definitely going to elevate your energy, yes. you know, and she is going to help you amplify your message. So that being said, Macaul, where can people find you? Oh, yes. Okay, this is perfect. Yes. So <laughs> charismahacking.com. Charismahacking.com. I literally have a group coaching program that's launching in a few weeks that is all, all about right. implementation. It's all about those changes that I talked about. We have trainings. They will literally have access to every training I've ever done. It's called The Vault and Ooh. weekly implementation uh, workshops. So we Amazing. go through the trainings and we say, how is this specific to your business and how can we do this? It's called The Pumps Club. Charisma Hacking. <laughs> will give you all the information that you need. No boys allowed. I'm feeling so left out right now. I know it's for <laughs> women. I'm sorry. No, it's all good. It's all good. Men, for men, you can buy the vault separately. So you can buy all of those trainings separately and you can still get charisma hacking in your life. Awesome. Uh, you, know what I, you know what I love about this? That some people might, you know, when they say like, oh, but do you allow men? They're like, okay, yeah, sure, you can come. But you're like, no, because this is my this message. Is my audience. And this, this is, is my the people. people I am, you know, serving. So action points, guys. <laughs> I, wa I want to, we always leave someone, with, uh, people with some action points. Yes. 
And today you talk about self-reflection, right? Like looking, looking inside and, and asking, am I actually helping, serving people, giving them results? So I want to invite everybody to ask yourself those questions. And then if the answer is yes, don't stay quiet. Because guys, if you stay <laughs> quiet, you are doing a disservice to the people that you could be helping. So I invite you guys to action point, turn on the camera and share what your message is. Regardless, regardless of how it looks in the camera, it's fine. Just share that message today. Awesome. Well, Michael, I want to thank you from the bottom of our heart for being with us. Don't disconnect because we got to talk to you in just like just two minutes. Uh, and for everybody listening out there, please follow Fonzie's instruction. He actually was on fire today. I'm like super impressed. <laughs> it's, uh, it's all the coffee I had after a six hour drive. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, please do that before every episode. Uh, and with that being said, guys, I want to thank you so much and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. Oh, yeah. Follow us on social media at BizResco and if you want to get in touch just send us a DM thank you so much and we'll see you on the next episode thank you Michael thank you, thank you.